school's back in session, but things look a little different for many more students. This month on the Inside More television program, we'll show you how more public schools are recovering from the destruction of May 20th to get kids back to class. Following the May 20th tornado, many more residents are turning destruction into an opportunity to build a better city. We'll show you how the city of Moore is working with neighborhoods to reimagine the future. And finally, get a glimpse of Moore's beautiful new furniture store, Hemispheres. We'll put the spotlight on this incredible new shopping experience. It's all coming up right now. Now that summer is over and classes are back in session, students around Moore are returning to business as usual. But for students who attend Briarwood and Plaza Towers Elementary, this is not just another year going back to class. Throughout the summer, the school district of Moore has been hard at work to ensure that those students could make it back to school. It was a really good feeling to have our kids back in their seats. This district is about moving forward and growing and building and doing what we need to for our community with the understanding that we will never forget. While the new buildings are underway, the district has relocated the schools to temporary locations that are still easily accessible to families. Briarwood uh, had the opportunity to move uh, that entire community, or we did, to the uh, Emmaus Baptist Church. I mean, everybody's very thankful. We're thankful that we get to be together. Um, the church has been amazing. They've gone above and beyond to help us. It hasn't really changed how we're conducting classes at all. They have enough room. We, have, we took up all three buildings. We had 570 students return. We have the same amount in every class that we had before. For students, the new building is a welcome change. They've really liked it. It's been, uh, it feels normal to them, and I think they're really enjoying it. And this is the first time they've had hallways. For faculty and staff, the adjustment has come with its own challenges. Try this one for me. They're doing well. The rooms aren't as big as normal class room sizes, so they're having to adjust to smaller spaces. While Briarwood has been in session at Emmaus Baptist Church, the students and staff of Plaza Towers have moved into Central Junior High. We had to do a complete remodel on the 800 building at Central Junior High. We were ready at 1st of August and so that the teachers could get moved in. Teachers started coming that very day and we worked right up until the last minute getting the restrooms finished and getting classrooms together. There have been plenty of big changes but the students are happily adapting to their new school. The students love the building. They feel at home here. Having the panther wall duplicated for us was a big thing. All the students recognized it right off the bat and realized this is home for our temporary purposes. School is business as usual, with the exception of just each day we get new and new, you know, more and new things. School has been schedule, routine, and the same for the kids. For the faculty, staff, and students of both schools, there has been a sense of recovery that has brought everyone closer together. Everybody has been chipping in and whatever we need, they're right here. We just have to pick up the phone and call. Something that we've learned as a faculty and that I'm hoping is spilling over into the students is you can't go through this alone. This has been a school year of change and adjustment for Briarwood and Plaza Towers Elementary Schools. But thanks to the love from the community of Moore, the students and staff are making steps to becoming stronger. It's the community as a whole uh, that has really come together and, and wrapped their arms around the school district. Uh, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be where we are today unless it wasn't for our community. What do sticky notes and surveys have in common? Well, nothing really, but when you put both in the hands of more residents, it can mean renewal for a community. Moore hosted two visionary meetings for residents to share ideas on how to build the city back even better than it was before. A packed house filled the community center, letting their voices be heard. I think that we are going to have some funding opportunities that we can take advantage of. Uh, that we can address some of these bigger issues. And so we're, 
We're really excited about that. Really that's why we wanted to have these meetings is because we know that, that we will have some resources in the near future to address what the residents would want, so we wanted to hear from them. Before discussion began, residents were handed surveys and asked to rate different neighborhood designs and layouts. If you were in that community, you know, love it, hate it. For some residents near the disaster area, trimming weeds or cutting grass, as well as adding street lights to darken corners, top their list of concerns. Lighting, uh, for one, like street lights, uh, speed bumps, you know, in our neighborhood. I know our main street is a big artery that connects two neighborhoods and uh, speeders coming through there. We have a lot of children that play out in front. For our neighborhood, we put um, kind of some of the landscaping, um, you know, more street lights, um, kind of some things like that to just kind of improve the neighborhood a little bit. The residents broke off into smaller groups and in each session, people wrote down new ideas or improvements for their neighborhoods on sticky notes and stuck them to aerial photos of the city. This hands-on meeting allowed the city to engage with those who wanted to see improvements after the tornado. It's certainly functional, but is it what you would like to see in your backyard? So we'll take all of that information uh, and kind of boil it down to some common themes. Um, and then those themes can really be applied not only just in these affected neighborhoods, but it can kind of be applied to the entire city because these are generally going to be the comments that most everybody can agree on. The city also discussed plans for the new Central Park and plans for rebuilding both Little River and Veterans Memorial Park. just kind of interested in kind of the direction they're going you know with rebuilding the parks and kind of what they're doing for the neighborhoods so just excited to see the the rebuilding and improving process having parks around neighborhoods is important to the community one resident living on the east side of the disaster area enjoyed having veterans memorial park so close to his house and loved what it stood for yeah, we really enjoy veterans park uh, it was a great location it, it had a good playground uh, we really enjoyed the theme, I think, more than anything. Having the veterans wall there and the wooden soldiers is just fantastic. Everybody loved it. Uh, the running trail is great. You know, having the creek running through, you know, we had the covered bridge. That was really nice. Moore's partnership with the community was such a success, it's likely the city will continue the discussion in the future. You know, with this turnout being so amazing, I do think it's likely that we'll have some more meetings. Um, I got the impression that everyone who was here was, was genuinely interested in their neighborhood and their city and making it better. So that's great. That's what we're all about. There's a new name in town when it comes to unique furniture options. That name is Hemispheres. We uh, carry furnishings from all over the globe, more of a traditional style furniture, uh, European style furniture, very unique kind of cultural treasure, so to speak. Hemispheres is owned by the Hobby Lobby Corporation, David and Barbara Green. Um, they had a vision to have a furniture store unlike any other, and we opened our first one in Oklahoma City on September 4, 2001. Hemispheres has experienced success at their other locations, and is ready to start serving the growing community here in the city of Moore. We're really excited to be a part of the Moore community. We've had an overwhelmingly positive response from the people here. Um, there's a lot of great people in Moore, and unfortunately they've been through a lot with the tornado, and we are just thrilled and excited to be able to be a part of their rebuilding process. As part of the rebuilding process, Hemispheres offers a unique service to its Moore patrons. Anybody that is building a home can actually come in the store and purchase a house full of furniture, and we will hold that merchandise until their house is built and, and ready to be moved in. As one of Oklahoma's own, Melissa Moore is a great fit for Hemisphere's newest location. Having been an employee at one of Hemisphere's Texas locations, Melissa was more than happy to be offered the store manager position at the location here in Moore. I've been with Hemisphere's for a little over two years now, and uh, I was really excited when I got the opportunity to come back to Moore uh, because I'm from Oklahoma. 
uh, and I really enjoy being in Oklahoma and the people here are just so friendly and it's uh, just a great place to be, so I'm excited to be here. With the right location and eager manager, Hemispheres brings a world of fine furnishings to our growing community. They furnish bedrooms, dining rooms, living rooms, home office, and even offer outdoor furniture and decor. If you're looking to furnish a home, um, definitely come and see us. We offer a variety of things um, that are unique, um, affordable, and will really make your home feel special. To find out more about Hemispheres, refer to the following contact information.